I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through the ABRSM Theory grades. Once you've completed your Music Theory and Practice Workbook, past papers are an excellent revision resource. I've worked with you from 2014 past papers right through to 2018 past papers and now I'm thrilled to be able to bring to you the 2019 practice papers as well. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download these in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find out about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best be prepared for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time on exam day. So if you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like, that would be super, and please do subscribe to my channel and share out the videos. And now we're going to continue with the practice paper A from the 2019 Grade 3 booklet. So if you turn with me to page 4, we can have a look through these. I suggest you have your own attempt first of all. Work in pencil, it doesn't matter if you go wrong then, you can just erase your mistakes and you'll learn much more thoroughly by making those mistakes. So I'm hoping you've had a go and now we'll check through these together. So question three asks us to name the key of each of the following scales and then once we've done that we need to state if it's a minor key whether it's harmonic or melodic minor form. Now I suggest that you always sketch out your circle of fifths just up to the number of sharps and flats that you need to go to. This is the whole lot. You don't need all of those straight off. And that way you've got your majors and minors straight away. If you're not sure how to do that, if you go onto the playlist of my Music Theory for Everyone, you'll find a video there explaining the circle of fifths. And then that helps you to get this down quickly so you're absolutely sure of all of your keys and your related keys. And then you're not going to get stressed, scratching your head, wondering what to do. All your thinking's done and you just refer to that. So let's have a look at this first one. So the first thing to do, and this is like really obvious in some ways, but it's so easily missed. We need to look what our tonic is. We're in the treble clef. F A C. Every good boy deserves football. F G A B C. So we know that it's C something. So that's kind of got us on the right track straight away. Now we know that C major has no sharps or flats, so it can't be C major, so it must be C minor. Now here we can see we've got a B flat, an E flat and an A flat. C minor is related to E flat major which has B flats, E flats and A flats and all of those are present which means it's coming down with the whole key signature. That means it must be the melodic minor form. If it was the harmonic minor form the seventh would be raised and that would become a natural but nothing's been altered it's just the key signature of the related key and so we're coming down in the melodic minor descending form. So it's C melodic minor. And so if you take things just one step at a time, it's quite easy to get to the correct answer. But it's when you just try and look at it as a whole and make a snap decision, that's when you'll go wrong. Take it in stages. So here we are beginning and ending on the tonic. We're in the bass clef of A flat because it's all cows eat grass or good boys say football always. So we know we are in A flat something. So let's see what we've got. We've got an A flat, we've got a B flat, a D flat, an E flat. So we have the whole key signature of B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, no unexplained extras. And we know that A flat major has a key signature of four flats, B, E, A, D flat. The whole key signature is present, and so it's a simple case of A flat major. Let's have a look at this next one. So we're in the bass clef, all cows eat, 
and we know that's a bottom G, good boys deserve, so G, F, E, so we know we are in E something. Let's see what we've got now, what clues have we got? We've got a good boys deserve, a D sharp, or cows, a C sharp. If you find it difficult reading the clef, so actually, instead of reading each individual note, what you can do is just E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Once you've started and found your tonic, just write the notes upwards. If this isn't the clef of your instrument, and so you're on slightly unfamiliar territory, just sketch out the letter names so we know we've got a D sharp, a C sharp, a G sharp, and an F sharp. So we have the whole key signature present of four sharps, F, C, G, D. The whole key signature is present, nothing is unexplained, and that is the key signature of E major. So we're just in a simple case of E major. Let's have a look at this last one. So here we have an F sharp, we're in the treble clef, the space is spelled face, F sharp. Every good boy to this football, F sharp. So we know it's F sharp something. So let's have a look what we've got here. So if you want to just sketch the letters, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. So we have an F sharp, a G sharp, a C sharp, an E sharp. Now then, it's not possible to have an E sharp without having all of the other ones that come before that. F, C, G, D, A, E. Uh, you know, that's not a key signature that you've come across in this grade. So that, it, that E sharp cannot be part of the key signature. However, F sharps, C sharps and G sharps can come together as a key signature. And if we look at a key signature of three sharps, it could either be A major, well our tonic is not A, it's F sharp. It could be F sharp minor, it is. And so how do we explain this E sharp? It's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh degree of the scale that's been raised. So we're in F sharp minor and the seventh has been raised which tells us it must be the harmonic minor. So it's F sharp harmonic minor because the harmonic minor has the raised seventh ascending and descending. So there we go, we've got there eventually, just take it one step at a time. Let's move on to the next question. So a little bit of note reading here. If these clefs, the treble and the bass is familiar to you because you play that instrument, maybe piano, um, then you wouldn't be too tricky here. However, when we start getting a bit off the map with all of these ledger lines, it's worth just working out a couple of different ways in which you can figure out the answers. So we know that the treble clef, every good boy deserves football, and the space is spell face, so every good boy deserves D flat. Notice when it's written in music, you put the flat sign first, flat D, because the musician needs to know that you're playing that note flattened before they actually play it. But when you're writing it in words, you write it as you would in a sentence structure. It comes the other way round. So here, we know that this is middle C in the bass clef, because if you just consider, it's the top of the bass clef, the bottom of the treble clef, we meet in the middle C, so the top of the bass clef is middle C. If you weren't sure though, you could think, well the bass clef is, good boys deserve football always, A, B, C, so keep counting C, D, E, we know that that is note E. So we've just kind of started ourselves off here. We know that middle C is at the bottom of the treble, and so one lower than C is B. So that's B, the B below middle C. Now here, we could either count back from one that we know here, and count back from this G, but it's quite a lot of counting backwards. So what we can do instead is just count this as note one, and count an octave up. So one space, line, space, line, space, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight takes us to here. And we know that that's an A, all cows eat grass. So we know that we're on A, an octave lower, and then it's flattened. 
so a flat. So same scenario here, we can now count down an octave. So we're in treble clef, so we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight takes us to the line. And we know in the treble clef, every good boy deserves football, F, an octave higher, and then sharpened F sharp. And then here we're using middle C as our reference point again. Remember at the top of the bass clef, middle C, and then one above that is D. There we go then. So that's that sorted. Let's look at this next question. So question five. We're looking at intervals and we're also looking to write intervals correctly as minor or major. A couple of things to help here. Now if you want some extra work on really looking at intervals in depth, if you go to my Music Theory for Everyone playlist, you'll see each interval from 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th and so on is fully explained in great depth. So do have a look at that video to help you. It's also helpful to have all of your keys to hand. Again, you don't need to go right the way to the bottom for this grade, but look at the circle of fifths video so that you really can get your related keys down quickly. And even if you don't play piano, it is helpful to have a little sketch of a piano keyboard. You can use a scrap paper in your exam and just sketch out a piano keyboard. It doesn't have to be a work of art, just two black notes skip, three black notes skip, because it's much easier to visualize the intervals to make sure you're getting these major minor scenarios. Because if you remember that major means greater and minor means lesser, suddenly it all starts to make sense. Just fourths, fifths and octaves are perfect and I talk about that in the Music Theory for Everyone uh, intervals videos. So here we've got to count up eight. That's that's half mark straight away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight takes us to G. Now then, just watch out though. We're after a melodic interval. They become one after another like a melody. Harmonic intervals come together like a chord or a harmony. So we need to write a G here. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G as a melodic interval. Got a bit carried away there with my pencil, didn't I? Just, uh, just once will do. So perfect, it doesn't need changing at all. G to G, that's it, job done. So now, our tonic is G and we're counting up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you're not sure, be careful, you must always count the tonic, the lowest note as one. And if you're not careful, if you're not careful and go one, you'll be a step out all of the time. If you want to, you could even just sketch out the steps of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can see that here in the bass clef that E is a sixth. Now we need to make sure this is a minor sixth. So G to E is part of the major scale. It's a full step. Minor takes us down a semitone, a semitone smaller, and G minor has B flats and E flats in it, so it needs to be an E flat. However, the key signature does that job for us. That is already E flat, and so we're, we're correct. So now then, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. G to F gives us our seventh. Every good boy says football. So that's a seventh. So that's half marks, but we need to make it a major seventh. Now G major, we know, has F sharps. And if you look at the interval, G to F, is smaller than G to F sharp. We need that full step up to the F sharp to make it major. The key signature will not do that for us. We need to raise that by adding a sharp sign. So now it's a major seventh. So here we go. G, one next door note up, one, two, G to A. 
Now, just because it's in G minor, don't presume that every interval is minor because major means greater or full step. G to A is a full step, it's a full tone. The A flat would make it the minor smaller. And so it's G to A is already a major second. The, the interval is major, even though it's within the minor scale. So don't presume just because you're in a minor key you need to change that. G to A is a full step, major second, job done. So now we're going from G, A, B. One, two, three, G to B. So that's a third. Now we need to make sure it's a minor third. So G to B is our major third. However, minor, we're making it smaller, B flat, and it's your minor third part of your G minor key signature. B flat is already part of your key signature for the minor scale, and so that is already B flat. It's already a minor third. We've, it's already made smaller by the key signature, and so the key signature does the job for us there. So that's now completed. That's the end of that question. I do hope that's helpful to you. I hope it's helping you with your studies and with your revision and exam prep. I also hope you're enjoying it. I certainly enjoy working through it with you. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. Please do share out the vids. And also please do have a browse around my website. Go to SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resource and information that's available to help you there. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.